All right, here we are. Here we are. Welcome to Real Estate Update. It is January 23rd, 2021, and we have going to tackle a challenging topic today and try and make it as easy to understand as we possibly can. But we are talking about taxes. We're going to talk about Prop 19. just passed this last election cycle in California and try and give you some um, tips and what's going to happen as best of our knowledge. So we're going to start that with a disclaimer. Yes, the disclaimer is we're not CPAs, we're not attorneys. So we're not giving you tax advice, we're not giving you legal advice, we're just trying to tell you the way we understand Prop 19 that is going to be around February 16th, and then I think it fully kicks in April 1st. April 1st, April right. April 1st, so the first step, February 16th, and you've got a couple of holidays in there, so it's basically February 12th, because the recorder's office is going to be closed from the 13th through the 16th, and won't reopen until the 17th. So that all being said, I mean, this is a very complicated law, uh, the way we understand it. I mean, you're definitely going to want to get with your trust attorney, you're definitely going to want to get with your tax attorney, and you're definitely going to want to get with your CPA before you do any radical moves with your real estate based on Prop 19. Is that the, the disclaimer you were That's thinking? That's right. So there's our disclaimer. So let's get started. Uh, Prop 19 uh, passed this last election cycle, so we are coming into its effective dates here, like he said. So uh, I'm going to start with Part 1. Uh, which is the transfer your tax base part, and then we'll go into part two, which is the estate planning part. So under part one, um, I'm not going to even go into what the old rules were because it's going to get too confusing. I'm just going to talk about what the new rules are that are rolling out uh, starting on April 1st. So after April 1st, if you sell a property um, in California, uh, you can transfer your tax base. If you're over 55 or severely disabled, or there's been a disaster in your in your area, fire or natural disaster, you can qualify to transfer your tax base. Um, you can buy anywhere in California, any any county, and you can buy up from your sales price, or you can buy down from your sales price, which is new. Um, and you can do it up to three times uh, in your life after 55. So those are all kind of the general parameters of the part one of this uh, proposition. You want to jump into the board real quick? Um, I have an example. Sure. I'm going to bring the board up. I'll talk about my ex okay, example. Yes, we got the board. Now I picked, the board. I'm using the examples that are on some of the forums, like you can find them um, online uh, on the Board of Equalization. There's some nice uh, information Q&As on this, but this is the example they used. So, what, you want to do it? Go ahead. Well, no, we were just going to say this part one, the transfer in your tax base, uh, let's say you have a tax base of three hundred thousand. That means you bought your house when you originally bought it for three hundred thousand. You've had it X amount of years, and you're going to sell it for one million dollars. Now you're going to buy a million five replacement property for that, and your new tax base is going to be eight hundred thousand. So you're going to take the original three hundred thousand, right, and then you're going to sell it for one million. And then buy a million five. So you're going to take the five hundred thousand from your sales price to your new sales price or your new purchase price of a million five, and then that's going to give you a tax base of eight hundred thousand. Is that how you understand that, Lisa? Yes. I just have one thing he said that that I just want to clarify. It's not the price when you bought it, um, which is what he said. It's your tax base according to your tax bill. So your tax base on your tax bill is your tax base um, at the current time. Oh, it is. Oh, yes. okay. It doesn't because it goes up a little bit every year. They're always getting you. Yes, it does. Unless the market goes down, then it goes down. That's so right. yes, it, it. So now, if you buy down, if you sell your house for a million dollars and you buy less than that, then you keep, as our understanding is, you keep your tax base whatever it was. So um, that's how we understand stand it. Where it goes into effect is if you buy up. So it does save you a little bit there. Um, but that's how the part one works. So then I'll go into um, part two. Oh, no. Part two. Part two. Part two is the estate planning parent to child part. Uh, to make it really simple, the only way that 
part two of this bill helps you with your estate planning is if you take your primary residence and you are going to pass it to a child and the child is going to live in the property as their primary residence. So that's the only situation where it favors you. So if that's your situation, then this will, fav will favor you. Every other situation, it, do it doesn't. So it's kind of as easily as I could narrow that into who it favors. So in that situation is the example I'm going to give here because it's the only situation that, that it benefits you. Um, and then we'll talk about some of the, the other aspects of it. So while the board is up here, we'll go straight to, to the board. <laughs> part two. So parent to child transfer. Your tax base on the house is 400000 and that's according to the tax bill. And then they give you a million. You add a million to that. So now your tax bill is a million four. The property is worth two million at the time of death. So you subtract your million four, and that gives you your new tax base of six hundred thousand. So that is how we understand that to to be. And so the child who's going to live in that property as their primary residence, their tax base goes to six hundred thousand from. Um, three, uh, four hundred th uh, thousand. So that's how we un understand that will work. As far as vacation homes, um, commercial properties, family farms, rental properties, all those things get reassessed at time of death. Now the reason we wanted to talk about this right away, because this goes into effect on February 15th is actually what the law says, but like Gary said, it's a holiday, so it's going to roll into probably the 16th. But, you know, it's about, that's about the date of death. So if the person dies prior to February 15th or 16th, depending on how that rolls out, um, that's when all these laws go into effect on the new estate planning laws. So we want to highly, highly, highly encourage you to talk to your CPA and your attorney right away. And no matter what, you probably need to do an estate review of your trust plan um, right away. Because if you own property in California, you own more than one property in California, you're going to definitely want to talk to your estate planning attorney and just do an estate review and make sure that what was in effect and what your intentions are when you wrote it are still what you want to do based on the new rules here. Yes, it's very complicated. It's your CPA, your attorneys. Everybody's going to have to get involved in this process because what you don't want to do is make a huge mistake right now. Right, right. So I... Uh, I just want to make sure, make sure I covered all the things here. Okay, so one of the, the things I'm done. I'm done with the board. Board's yes. done. <laughs> the board. The board's done. So when these um, things go into effect, which is only in a few weeks, the heirs are going to owe the new property taxes on all your properties. If you own commercial buildings, apartment buildings, things like that, you've owned for a long time. The property will be reassessed at time of death, and then the property taxes from the time of death at the new assessed value are going to be due from the date of death. So if it takes you a year or two, which it can take you, to settle an estate, uh, don't be surprised by the fact that you're going to get a tax bill uh, that's going to be probably quite a bit larger than what your parents were paying. <laughs> well, absolutely. And we're talking appraised prices, so there's no like averages or anything like that. An appraiser physically has to go out there and as an independent appraiser and put an appraised value on all the properties at time of death. Time of death, that's right. So we just wanted to make everyone aware and make sure that you uh, know what's coming so you can plan accordingly. And like we said, talk to your CPA and your attorneys right away. Uh, make sure the attorneys that you're, that you're talking to have a lot of real estate experience, small business experience, because some uh, attorneys don't deal with this all the time and you definitely want someone who does. And trust attorney, you're probably going to mm -hmm. deal, want to deal with your trust attorneys too. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. going to be a lot of attorneys involved, but the more people involved, hopefully the better decisions you're able to make. Now we've heard people scrambling to transfer title, change title, add a child on, all kinds of things uh, right now. Probably not a good idea to do anything like that without talking to your attorney, your estate planning attorney, and your CPA because it's going to have other effects that you don't want to trigger. Like, for example, sometimes if you transfer the title or add someone on title, it can trigger the due on sale clause from your mortgage, and your mortgage is all of a sudden going to become due if you have a mortgage on that property. So there are some secondary effects. You want to be real careful about that, um, and you're going to lose some benefits 
that I'll get to in a second if you start transferring and changing title right now. So again, talk to your attorney, talk to your CPA. Um, there are, we've heard people setting up LLCs and some other things to put their properties in uh, to avoid lawsuit things and divorce things and to try and mitigate some of these changes. So um, it's time to yes. call them. That's why we're doing this show now. You have a couple weeks to yes. try and make some changes if you need to. Uh, okay, so that is that. Um, another thing about gifting property, if you gift a property to a child, which we have heard, um, you but you want to still be collecting the rent. So you're depending on the rent on your rental properties, but you're going to gift the property to your child now ahead of these changes. Well, you can't really do that because then you can't collect the rent. If the child owns the property, then they uh, collect the rent, and the IRS is going to follow you on that because you know they never go away. Um, and just so you know, uh, gift tax, if you don't do all these transfers right, 40% gift tax. So be sure that you are not just changing title and doing things on your own because it's going to be, uh, you know, it's always going to catch up to you and probably not in a good way if you don't have your attorney doing this. Oh, yeah, Pro uh, Prop 19 yeah. is scheduled to bring the state of California an additional $1 billion in tax revenue. A year. So every year. Every year. So definitely tread lightly. You don't want to be the majority of that one billion dollars that you're paying. That's right. And remember that the IRS, the tax rules, and the county assessor rules, two different set of rules. So that's why you need to be sure that, that you're making making the right decisions with the county assessor and the right decisions for your tax planning because they're two different things. Very complicated. Uh -huh. you know, what's that website where they can go to? If, if... Uh, there's some information on this on the California Board of Equalization website. There's a QA and a um, and there's also some charts that I think they did a pretty good job of trying to simplify how complicated this is um, in some charts. And I'll put the links here too so they are here easily once we're done. Um, so you can do that. Yeah, so go to your search engine, type in Board of Equalization, Prop 19, should pull right up, and then that's going to be some answers to some questions for sure. Right. You'll see one of my ex examples. I pulled it right off there so that if you go and read their forms, that's where my examples came from. So now how can you take advantage of this if you've been waiting for this and you do want to transfer your tax base um, that all goes into effect anything sold after April 1st. So if you're waiting for this, um, it's time now to start getting your house ready to sell. Uh, if you need to do any work or clean it up or spruce things up or start moving things out, whatever you need to do to get your home re uh, ready, and we're happy to come um, help you walk through and help you make decisions on what's the best value of things to do to get your home ready for sale so we can get it on the market and you can close after April 1st and then buy your new home and then you can transfer your tax base. Well, I would think there's going to be a lot of properties coming on the market to mm -hmm. take advantage of that. There's right. no question about it. Because before Prop 19, there was only 11 counties out of the 58 counties in California where you could actually transport your property tax base with you. So now it's going to be all 58 counties. So no matter where you're living, you can take your tax base, you can buy up, buy down, buy the same price, and still have lower taxes. So that, that's really going to be the boom is it's going to give a lot more people flexibility to move. And let's face it, right now during the COVID-19 pandemic, people are moving. People are establishing different homes or homestead or, hey, this is what I want to call home, not where I'm living now because of the dramatic difference in the situation around us. That's right. And just to um, talk about inventory, inventory is at, I think, the all-time low. It's just crazy out there for our buyers. And we did just get one of our buyers into escrow last night, so we're very excited because every situation right now is competitive. And that one, um, our buyers, were so happy for them that they are in, and we are excited about that. Um, but I want to talk about inventory because I ha found some macro numbers here on the California Association of Realtors website for California. In January 1st of 2019, there were 54,675 properties for sale. January 1st of 2020, 40,000. January 1st, 2021, 26,000. So almost half the amount of properties for sale in the whole state of California versus uh, January 1st of 19. So I just thought those numbers were staggering, but just trying to give you an idea, if you haven't been out house 
hunting lately, um, what the situation is. Um, and a couple other things I wanted to talk about. So for your planning, as you're planning your uh, real estate and you're uh, talking to your estate planning attorney, which you're all going to go do now that we've told you to do your estate plan review, trust review, um, there are some things coming with the new administration that have been uh, talked about that are potential things that the new administration is going to be rolling out. One of them is right now you have an $11 million estate tax um, cap, or what do you want to call it? $11 million per person or $22 million for a married couple. Now we're talking estate tax. These are IRS, not the assessor, so I don't want to get confused. And the new administration is proposing lowering that to $3.5 million as the cap. So if the total... Um, um, what's the word? The, not the portfolio. The total estate is worth three and a half mil, million or less. You don't own, own a state tax, but that's going from twenty-two million down to three and a half million, and you'll owe tax on the difference. It's a non-political statement. I mean, that's just what's in the in the winds of change that's going to happen. And one right. thing that's inevitable is change. That's Everything's right. always changing. But we we you know always try and pass on the information that we have. So what we hear, we're passing along. To you, another one that is proposed is changing the long-term capital gains tax, which is currently 20%. So if you've owned uh, an investment for over one year, you're subject to the 20% capital gains, long-term capital gains tax, and they're proposing they're changing that to your regular income tax rate, whatever that is, um, which is higher than 20%, probably. And then the third thing um, that's on the docket is stepping up right now. If you, uh, like we're just talking about, when someone dies, the property gets stepped up, stepped up to the current value at the time of death. And so that gives you some um, freedom from the taxes of that difference. But what they're proposing is that they're going to eliminate that stepped up basis. So right now the way it works is you, know, you sell a property, um, excuse me, you own a property, your spouse dies, the property gets stepped up to the, to the time of death of the spouse, and then a few years later, the other spouse dies, so it gets stepped up again. And so the heirs, the children, get that double stepped up basis uh, for the value of the property for tax reasons. And they're proposing taking all that stepped up basis away. So if all those things happened, it would mean the estate inheritance taxes would go to 70 to 80 percent of the value of the estate. So just be sure you're up to date on what the current estate laws are. And as they change, we will let you know. But those are kind of some of the things that are on the on the boards, on they're talking about. Yes. Things that could happen. So things could happen. A lot of things could happen different than that too, but that's just what we're hearing right now. Yeah, we um, I found some more. I always like I always look looking for tidbits of information for the show. And one of them that I had here was about this Prop 19, that the new estate part of Prop 19, part two, is going to affect uh, 650,000 California home uh, uh, owners in the last 10 years have taken advantage of the tax break the way it, the way it used to be. So it's going to have a huge um, impact. And like Gary said, a billion dollars a year in increased tax revenue to the state. Well, and I would think that the new increase, I would think the numbers would go up from 650,000 people taking advantage of it just based now that all the counties are open to this. And it's a big deal. It's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, question of the day? Uh, yeah. All right, right into it. Here is the question of the day from the... All right, how long has the typical home homeowner remained in place for 2020? How long? how long do you think people have stayed in their homes on average? Anyone have any, get any guesses here from our live audience? Think. I've got to guess. And if you're watching this on replay, <laughs> hashtag replay, because we always like to um, reach out to our people that are watching. All right, please. You ready? What's the answer? Yes. We have a guess here. I know, exactly. Estate taxes. I know. Thumbs down. I agree with you, Jill. <laughs> so how? what's the answer to how long do people stay in their homes on average? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. What, what, what do you think is your question? No, I do know. I'm just kidding. So the average is the typical home owner stayed in place 13 years, um, up slightly from 12.8 years in 2019, and way ahead of 2010, it was only eight years. So you are right, um, Julia, 
I don't know who's commenting under Gary and Lisa, but someone is. They were right. Eight. Um, so, yes, yeah, seven years. So it was, but it's going up. And on about one in four U.S. households has lived in the same home for more than 20 years. So right now it's 13 years. So it is growing up from eight years uh, in 2010. Well, I would think once this kicks in on April 1st of 2021 that the uh, people are going to start moving a lot more rapidly. So what I would think if you've been in your home, you know, 13, 20 years and you've got the opportunity to take your tax base with you and move somewhere else, that's what you're going to do. Excellent. Excellent opportunity for millions of people in California. Right. So if you, oh, it's Lindy. Hi, Lindy. <laughs> Watching here. Um, if you know anyone that's thinking about selling their home or they are interested, you want to talk about your options, you want to talk about how this is going to affect you, um, please give us a call. We're happy to talk. We can talk via Zoom. We can walk through via uh, FaceTime. Uh, we can come meet you however you want to get together. We'd love to talk about it. So we are always here to answer your real estate questions. If you have a question of the day that you want us to answer here on the show, send it in. You can DM us or text us. And we'd love to answer it. GaryLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Okay. It's wrapped.